Hello, welcome back to uh, tier listing. This is the last week. This is it. It's Wormkin time. You guys ready? Ah, we've taken us so long to get through all this. It is nice to be on the final clan combos. The final frontier. Yeah, space. When, when are we making... Uh, Dust, you might know about this. Maybe this is confidential, but when are they making a moon train? A moon train. Yeah, moon train. When's that coming? Well, you know, we've got a few steps to get through first. We do know at least what's coming next. They want to, I mean, maybe this is neither here nor there, but they want to put up the gateway program, which is essentially how do we actually even get things to the moon in a reasonable fashion? So that's pretty important before we get the moon train. I have some well, the, I mean, right. I think I think it's pretty clear. We use the train to get things to the moon. How is that not okay. obvious? Yeah, that covers my questions. I was going to ask if the moon train was a train to the moon or a train on the moon. It, yeah, I, it, well, when it's there, it's on the moon. <laughs> I guess I assumed it was on the moon, but maybe I should not have with Cranberry. No, no, I, it's a train that goes to the moon, and then once it's there, is on the moon. Oh, so it's like a one-way trip to the moon. Well, it, co it comes back. It goes back and forth. Are you just describing a rocket ship? No, because it's on a train. It's on a track. It's got to go up and down. Yeah, but like, okay, but like, could you, it's like the rocket ship was on an invisible track. Well, that's a plane. What? Rocket ships are, are planes. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying build a train. Why is this hard? I don't get what the issue is. You can't see my face right now, but uh, it's reacting to this. <laughs> So how yeah, about them worms? Yeah, I don't know if there's words to put that one in the <laughs> to, to go with that one. Yeah, let's talk about worms, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I guess we can just hop right in. Anything else before? It feels weird. I feel like we talk a lot more at the start of these videos, but. I don't know. Why? This time we got trains going to the moon, yeah. so yeah, fair enough. Just... Making sure there's nothing I'm forgetting. I don't know. You guys want to do your plugs at the start of the video for the first time ever or not? Um, no. Okay. That seems really weird. <laughs> uh, I always plug at the start of my videos because, you know, everyone's gone by the end of the video. Viewer retention. That's a fair point. But that's fine. Let's begin. Uh, I believe we should start with Wormkin Halhorn, the chef. Makes sense. Yeah, this is... So these clan combos are going to be hurt and benefit a little bit by how we do this. Mm -hmm. We're lumping the secondaries together, right? So we're mm -hmm. doing Torch and Queen Zimpling in the same kind of tiering. Mm -hmm. And I think Torch is exceptional as a secondary starter for Chief. I think Queen Zimpling is pretty abysmal as a yeah. secondary starter for Chief. Yeah. So ultimately, I've kind of gotten these ones in the middle I put this one at a B tier because you're balancing a really good clan combo and a really bad clan combo, and they kind of fall somewhere in the middle as a result. It depends so much on that secondary starter, really, because Chef is the dude that wants Echoes and interacts with them. And the easier you have a time of actually adding them to a floor, the better off you are. Champion is huge, big lad. You don't want to play units to get your echoes if you can avoid it. It's basically as simple as that. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna put them in. I'm gonna put this combo in D tier because I hate the Queen Zimpling start so much. But the the Torch one is fine, and this is one of the few combos where you split it up and you get different results, right? I think uh, Wormkin default Hellhorned is A tier, and I think that Wormkin Exile Hellhorned is like it's not F tier, but I don't like it. So I'm going to put it in yeah. D tier because I think that the XL combo is really bad and I want to uh, put more things in D tier. I want to be mad. But... Okay. Uh, I I'm putting it in the B tier. Uh, I mean, your logic is the same as ours, Voix, but I think you've just decided to ignore the torch uh, half, which is fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, you guys uh, are yeah. balancing it out. I refuse. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 fine. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, the clan doesn't do a whole lot together, I guess, in regards to like armor synergy, synergy, you have like, you have like shelter as a card that exists, but there's not a whole lot of cross clan stuff going on. It's, it's just, you know, you got, you got, you know, good buffs in Hellhorn. You have like, you know, ritual of battle and things like that. 
you know, defensive cards as well. It is, they just work well together. Yeah, I mean, there's there's enough here that kind of plays well, right? I mean, you've got infusions that are complementary. Steelworker is really good in the like bog chrysalis, for instance. You get mm-hmm. copies of it. You have horned warrior, which is a really good unit to play with corruptor, and so you have you have stuff, but it's not like particularly exceptional. It's just good. So it really is defined, I think, by how easy you can fill your floors with echoes, because that really defines how these runs mm-hmm. go. And so your starter actually kind of weighs into that a lot, I think, because those are all your starting echo generators. And you may not get cards that you can take that are echo generators later. Like, what if you see only imps and all your imps are infused? You might not be able to take those because how are you getting them on the floor, right? It can be kind of awkward. So mm-hmm. I, I, there's good and bad, but it's great. I, it's good overall. I like the normal torch variant of this a lot because mm-hmm. Torch is exceptional, and you can just ping your own dudes, and it's whatever. But I hate the Queen Zimpling one a lot, so I, I think that's a fair take. Uh, yeah. if, if you were if you were to break them up, where would you put them, I think? Because I'm thinking about it right now. I think, hypothetically, if they were broken up, I'd put Torch variant in A tier. I'd probably put the Queen Zimpling variant somewhere in D tier. So I guess, really, it's like a, a C plus B minus for me, and I'll round yeah. up to B as far as this list is concerned. Yeah, I'd have Torch in A tier for sure. And then the Queen Zimpling, I would actually F tier that because it's so hard to generate echoes that it really is a struggle. You obviously, you need like really good hits, right? You could just get got by your clan packs. You just see, I don't know, Molting Imp as your only infused card in the first two clan packs. And then what, you just struggle. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, you do. A lot also... A lot of your, a lot of times your Hellhorn scaling is Rage, and that has a bad interaction with Imps, which is worth noting as well. Uh, all the Chef Paths do fine with Hellhorn, though, like we said. You got, I mean, I got, yeah, bonus attack is good with Horn Warrior. Uh, you got Steelworker, who is a good enough frontliner for, or he can even act as like a backliner for uh, Reap Chef and just passively generate armor. And then, what's the other one? Strike? Multi Strike? Yeah, you can give that guy Rage. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel oh, like well, a that's... lot of a lot of times a big portion of your scaling in coming from Hellhorn is going to come out of the common imps and you know Wormkin units big theme they're big and it is hard to play imps with the big Wormkin units is my feeling yeah agreed do you guys ever use multi strike spine chief as like an actual carry for your run because I feel like I've never done that I've done I think I mentioned it before where I I put it behind a glug cider and that was pretty funny. But like as as like using it as the actual source of damage, I, I basically never do. It's usually really hard to scale him, but this is one of the few clan combos where it works because you can scale really well with rage. I have done something like a six space floor with infector in the back. You have like a keeper of echoes in front with multi strike, and then a, a endless rage imp that you keep playing in the front. Obviously, if it's infused, that's really good. You can win with that. That's enough hits, it's enough damage, and it's enough durability because the imp will chump and then the keeper is getting big as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it works, but it requires a specific start. And the reason I usually avoid Infector in general is because you pretty much have to see an Inspire unit that's good or else its entire ability is kind of just bad, right? Mm-hmm. And if you miss those guys, it's it's tough. I mean, you could use an egg, sure, but the eggs stop getting value from echoes after a certain point, at which stage you're basically just have a big dude in the back that does like, I don't know, 45 damage on his own. So I mean, I mean, I mean, bog chrysalis, the, the bog flies do get attacked for that turn if, it, if it's hitting first. Yeah, I mean, it, that's something, but a plus yeah. five per echo is like, I, I don't know, it's virtually unnoticeable yeah, in yeah. the grand scheme of the late combats, so. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we don't dunk on Infector more. He's kind of like Marsh Lord. He's a really cool idea, but... I, I yeah. like him way more than Marsh Lord, for the record. I, I like Marsh Lord a lot more. I think Marsh Lord's yeah. way more. Oh, sorry, I meant, I meant that. Sorry, inverse. I yeah. like Marsh Lord way more than Infector. I mean, Infector is yeah. just like, you generate a bunch of value. It's the same thing as like when you're etching with Marsh Lord after your egg is hatched. You're generating value that you don't use. Making three extra echoes that just go away does nothing usually. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it can be weird. I mean, there are some perks to it, I think. But the problem is that the the units that would benefit the most from the echoes are 
the other spine chief paths. <laughs> So you mm. can't get them together, right? I mean, because think about it. If you could have Inspire Reap 5 with generating three Echoes at the same turn, oh man, that would be crazy. Or if you could get plus 20 attack per Echo while generating those Echoes, that's big. But in all of those paths, the big payouts are on the end of the like rank three. Mm -hmm. And so you can't splash very effectively. It doesn't work out the way you want it to. And every other payout kind of sucks, right? The best I've ever done, I think, with Infector was like a Wormkin spike, like a really fat Wormkin spike. And then it was on the Relentless turn. So I did something like, I don't know, it was like 3,000 damage to the Divinity with Reap on Relentless or something crazy. That's pretty uh, sick. I mean, it was good, but like that, it's really hard to line that up. You know, you'd need to like freeze the Wormkin spike, make sure it's on Relentless so you get all the back and forth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, I don't know. It's inconsistent, I think. One final thing I want to say about this clan combo. Elhorn has one of the best cards for Wormkin. Uh, that card is called Hidden Passage. Stacking floors of Wormkin is really good, and Elhorn lets you do that. And it's not yeah. it's not expensive also. You don't you don't lose anything for playing Hidden Passage. That's a really good point. I mean, this is also one of the clans where I like doing things like drip falling my units in as well, even if it dazes them. Yeah. So having a free hidden passage, no strings attached, that's actually really, really strong. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, one of the problems you'll see with drip fall or restoring retreat, which we can talk about more later, is you have to play a middle floor, so you're losing space to play it. So hidden passage is really strong for that. But you have the downside of if you're overstacking floors, you're canceling out the ability to play imps. Kind of a double-edged sword. All right. Anything else? I think that covers it all. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay, I was worried, Cranberry. You were quiet there for a little bit. I thought maybe <laughs> your power went out. Nah, I, I've had two weeks, two weeks entirely no power outages. It's it's oh. great. No recent solar flare activity. Yeah, no. Good to hear. All right. On to uh, Exile Wormkin Hellhorn. We got Echo right now. Now I'm going to I'm going to start with this one. I have this in S tier and Ooh. there's a reason for it because Hellhorn has the consume spells that are absolutely broken with repeater. Just so unbelievably busted that you can scale almost any line in the clans out of control. You've got like shell Smith. rage serum. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. No, it's um. Uh, so you've got reinforce and last stand are the big ones here. You have shell Smith, which interacts positively with the reinforce. You can just create wall of armor that is impenetrable, just auto win relentless on HP. And then you have last stand, and you can go crazy with this with Repeater. Just bring it back every turn, get 9999 Rage. It doesn't even matter what you have at that point. Just hit the enemy, win game. And it's not even that hard. And there's also the fun interaction here of Transcendent with Marsh Lord. And you just spawn a million eggs as chump blockers. Surprisingly good when it lines up, actually. As long as you don't actually need the space for something else. But I actually think this is a really good clan combo. Mm -hmm. As well, and you know, you got Railhammer for the interaction with Shellsmith. You have Shelter. There's just a lot here that is really good to play. So, I could maybe be convinced about S tier, but for now, I'm leaving it in A tier. Uh, I was only half joking about uh, Rage Serum for the record. Like, it's not a good card, but Echo Right makes it a playable card, which is pretty cool. Like when you're Shellsmith two or Shellsmith three, and you have you know Rage Serum, it's like a zero zero energy. Eight AOE armor is pretty sweet. Yeah, like it's 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 a it it turns the cards that are previously terrible into cards that are uh, usable, which is good. Um, yeah, you know, you know, you, you covered you covered most of the stuff there though. You got alloy as well, which is just a nice a nice you know yep. shot of health. You got you got good stuff going on for sure. Uh, it's you know if you're trying to do a repeater line probably don't want to take things like rage serum because then it'll you know mess up your your uh your pool but i've had i've had runs also where i just go all in on etching i just take every single junk consume card that i find uh and it works pretty well so yep. yeah you, you've also got impish scholar in this clan combo 
which plays extremely nicely with repeater. You can just bring back a ton of cards and just play all of them. It's really good for etching in general. And this is one of the weird things I think where Spine Chief and Echo Right are so disparate in that they do very different things so wildly differently. They don't even, they basically don't even feel like the same clan sometimes because they focus on so far, so much different of things overall with the etching versus the echo manipulation and generation. So, whereas I think Chef really kind of sucks a little bit because he's big and the interactions aren't as strong and Queen Zimpling sucks when you're trying to inspire, you've got Echo Wright, who's a normal sized dude, really good interactions with Shellsmith and Repeater and Impish Scholar and stuff. And they kind of just go crazy together. And you don't mind the imps because you don't care about your echoes, really, in most cases. You just kind of yeet them into a random floor and they go away and it's fine. So. Yeah, I'm going to put this in. Uh... This is a tough call. I don't think it's S tier. I think it's probably. I think it's A or B, personally. I'll put it in A for now. Might be convinced to put this down to B later. I mean, it's good. I feel like the reinforced last stand thing isn't that crazy because Impish Scholar exists. Like, you you can do that already. Uh, it's harder, I guess, because Impish Scholar costs one and repeater's free. But you can just make things cost less. It's not that hard to do. Like, I don't feel like there's any crazy uncommon or common cards to repeater in hellhorn i'm trying to think of any it feels like they're all rares which to be fair you got like three rares that are really strong to hit with repeater but you also have to be playing a rage or an armor based line which you usually are but i i don't i feel like i haven't had that many runs where it is pertinent i guess like i don't feel like it happens all that often for me it sounds good on paper but it just doesn't line up that much for me, I feel like. So it's still Fair a good enough. combo. Don't get me wrong. I I think it's... I've also been playing... More of my Echo Right runs lately have been in not so much curating the pool, and it's been more just throw as much as you can at the wall and see what sticks. Uh, one thing that I do want to bring attention to, though, for Repeater specifically, is non-consume spells that exist that you can give consume that become significantly better. So there's two ways to do this through return soul or plus 20 consume and Hellhorn has one of them. It's Inferno. If you bring back Inferno every turn off of repeater, that's uh, strong. Mm -hmm. You basically get to cheat holdover with repeater if you can put consume on a spell. Yeah, true. It's pretty awesome. And I think that I think that this is the one but this there's one other spell that I think of that we can talk about when we get to it. Uh, also, remind me after we finish Wormkin melting, I have a I have a question about not main clans. I want to talk about Arcadian for a second, but I haven't played that clan in a while, and also we haven't talked about it in any of the other ones. But I just want to ask a question about it at the end. Sure. Yeah, I have actually played that recently, so I can yeah. hopefully I will, answer. I will be of no help. I have never played the Arcadian mod. Uh, shout out to the Chrono though about it. Good work. Yeah, it's a it's a cool full clan mod. I what I'm struggling with right now is I'm struggling with what I'm going to put in the S tier for this clan. Like I think that they're all pretty good, but I don't know what the best one is. Like I might end up moving something up to S tier later. But I think we can move on from Hellhorned unless you guys have anything else you want to say. No, that's all I've got. I have nothing. I guess one one last quick thing from me is Marsh Lord is kind of weird because Hellhorn puts armor down usually, and putting armor on unhatched eggs is just a waste. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's probably maybe not the literal worst clan to play Marsh Lord with, but it's not great, especially because like also like rage applications usually is not AOE unless you're talking about fledgling imps. Because mm -hmm. uh, because then if you're trying to play like a Bog Chrysalis and stuff like that, it's it, it, it there's a lot of weirdness there. For sure. Yeah. I actually kind of like armor on uh, the eggs just because it means you can be a little more aggressive in your upgrades and skip like a plus 25 if you have an intrinsic way of giving armor to it. Uh, obviously, this is the case where you've missed Hardened Hall or something, but one of the big challenges with eggs in general is keeping the egg alive until you hatch it, right? And then after that point, you want the thing to kind of go out of control. So 
It's just my yeah. take. Yeah, I was saying for Marsh Lord there. You can't the like the the armor gets wasted on the Marsh Lord egg. But you're right about the uh, armoring up other eggs and then not having to take like plus twenty five. But yeah. I think that's about it. Okay, what's up next? Uh Wormkin Awoken. Rainberry, would you like to go first on this one? Uh yeah, sure. Uh I have this one located in the A tier. I think the clans don't do a whole lot uh together. They're just really good. Like, you know, it's it's the it's the classic Wormkin has good buffs. Uh Awoken has good units, sort of deal. Um, you can you can do things like you know, uh, Corruptor Chief, and then Animus of Will, and just you know get a lot of crystals, give it quick, and then it'll kill everything hopefully. Uh, but they they don't do anything crazy. I feel like unless I'm I'm missing something, they're they're good though. I mean, same I do like sweepers as well. You can do like a sweeper behind Chief. You can you know, you can use you can use Chief as backline clear with with Decayer. Like you got you got good choices. Yeah, this is definitely a good clan for keeping Chief alive, right? Because mm -hmm. he's got a big HP bar. You can throw heals at him, keep him alive that way. If the heals are infused, even better. And you obviously have Quick Sweep sitting behind Corruptor with massive stat gains. You just incant, you know, not incant, but you infuse every turn, go up to like eight echoes, and that's what, like 320 AoE damage? Pretty clean run. So it's it's strong. I quite like this one. I have it in A tier myself. I don't think it's outrageous, but it feels good. Obviously, I think Root Seeds with Fracture is probably a match made in heaven. The starters are just so incredible next to each other. So there's always that. But but yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling with this one. I I want to give it S tier, but I'm not a hundred percent convinced. I feel like I could list like three or four really good things about this combo though. Healing Chef to keep him alive through, uh, like, Reap, which is good. You got, uh, what's, which one's the one that gives the, I always call him Aura Chef, but I feel like that's not a great one. What's the one that, what do you call it? Corruptor. Them? Corruptor, yeah. You got Corruptor with Animus or Corruptor with Sweep, which is good. You can also, I guess in, like, Bizarro World, you could play Cultivate on... Infector, and maybe that that's sounds, playable. That sounds really cursed, but I mean, you could yeah. then uh, you could put like an egg, weirdo. you could put Keeper of Echoes as an infusion in your Awoken Hollow, oh. and then then they bounce value at each other, and it would be kind of cute. Yeah, I don't know if it would be too. good. It's true, you could. I don't know if it would be good or if it would scale fast enough, but it would be something. I hate yeah. this. I'm just like I'm trying to think of a way that you could get. A self and I actually think that self infused awoken hollow with a chef behind it and you take double space could work, but I don't know. If it's dumb and it works, is it dumb? Yeah, but yes. yeah, yeah, still dumb. It it's was, tough but... because, like, I think actually chef has more HP than awoken hollow self infused by default, so you'd have to do some shenanigans with plus HP in order to actually cultivate chef, but yeah, you just gotta uh, kill your multi strike on both of them. Just, just give them both multi strikes so that way the cultivates going back and forth are like still both pretty good. Like, you know, there you go. Fair. Case closed. I think you actually would maybe want to do this the other way. You would do Keeper of Echoes infused with Awoken Hollow. That would probably be better. Yo, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm going to give this S tier for now, but I might drop this out later. I like this combo a lot. I'm a big Awoken fan. I think Awoken is my pick for strongest clan in the game. I have a really easy time with them. Uh, I feel like Chef and Awoken, you just have, either starter is good, and I think that Chef is good with this clan. So I'm going to give it S. You also have Restoring Retreat. The only time in existence where Restoring Retreat feels like a good card. And even yeah. then, sometimes it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's worth, you are the Shattered Shell guy, so I think it makes sense. And not anymore. That was 50 episodes ago. They stopped showing me that unit. What are you these days, then? Uh, I don't even know. Who I, am. <laughs> I, have, I have a confession. Yeah, it's gonna be up in like a, probably a week. I have a really big backlog, so it's gonna be like a week from now probably. But I did an infinite again. Uh huh. But I didn't count shards correctly. I wasn't uh -huh. begging, and it wasn't, and it wasn't <laughs> oh, even yeah. like a, it wasn't even like I got to the last ring and didn't have enough. 
I just forgot to like take the the divine boon at that the end. That's a shame. Oh, that's a tragedy. Yeah. I can I, I it's a win. The, the infinite was like locked in. It was like turn one easy every time. So I'm not like I'm not sweating it, but like I am very upset. That is that is unfortunate. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know why there hasn't been a theme in my videos lately. We had like a week of getting attacked by formless child though, which was fun. That you happened a, to me as well. You got a formless child follower in your comments yeah. now who counts them every time. Uh, every time I see formless child, I make sure I make a note of it. Oh, hey, there's formless child. Yeah, he's been showing up for me. I, I keep trying to take him. I keep trying to use him. It's not working. No, it's tough. I think you've actually had a lot of high rolls lately, though, Voix. So you might yes. be the guy who high rolls imps or something. Yeah, or I, the high roll where I got Crucible Collector to solo carry the run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. About, yeah, we can talk about that in four combos. Anyway, anything else you guys want to say about Wormkin Awoken? No, I'm good. It's in my A tier, so I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's really strong. I also like it. All right. I'll take Exile Wormkin Awoken. This is the other one. This is like the one that I was considering to put into A tier or S tier because I'm trying to do one S tier per video so that you get around six. I'm going to put this in A tier for now. I might switch this with S tier later, but I think this combo is good. You got a lot of good stuff you can do. Basically the same stuff, but you more focus with etch triggers in uh, Exile Wormkin. And so... You can do etch on a sweeper, which is a good scaling option. Most of what we said for default Wormkin Awoken applies here. Yeah, I mean, this is like first of kin infusion in the sweeper. You have Shellsmith in front. The line is straightforward. I, so fair enough. It, it wins. I, yeah. I, I do feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Awoken doesn't really have any like very good consume cards that you can like repeat. Like, I guess, I guess you have like, uh, the draw three next turn cards. Uh, yeah, you can do some infinites here with Awoken's Rail Spike and Wormkin etchings oh, and nonsense you know, like that. But... Yeah, maybe, maybe Voix can do that one. I'm not, I'm not I, willing to be that. I have, guy I yet. have done that one, Cranberry. Yeah, I, I know see, you have done it. You see, Cranberry, you take all of the infinites, but you take all the easy, non painful yeah, ones. I've yeah. suffered, Cranberry. <laughs> yeah, idiot. I, oh played 15 stygian spikes with x plus 3 15 is an understatement it was like 200 to kill the divinity that was a that was a two hour run yeah i uh i'll have another confession i recorded an episode last night where i did 1000 damage to the divinity with sting thanks to an infinite so that's horrible it's <laughs> <that's> pretty rough <laughs> yeah just you know you just you just stop playing them at a certain point you go you know what monster train i don't want this anymore it's not worth it <laughs> yeah you kind i've of, you... proven myself Right, you start to get into the bargaining stage where you're like, hey, I can kill him over two turns, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I had that with the the Subsuming Blade Infinite, where my game started to lag on Seraph because I was playing Subsuming Blade so much. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I think that I think that you're right, though. It's interesting, though, to talk about this combo versus Default Wormkin Awoken because you think of, when I think of this combo, I think of more focuses on like etch on sweepers, etch on animus, things like that. And then you, on the regular side, you think of like, I don't know, corruptor plus sweeper, corruptor plus animus. I don't know. I've, I've had runs where I've only found like, you know, six good consume cards and then no recursion, like no broken memories, never found a repeater for echo, right? And I've tried playing like etch strategies, like first of kin infusions, and it just, it falls apart. Which is, I guess, few and far between, but I've had it happen before, so watch out. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I mean, fortunately, you, of course, have all the extract cards that are just completely broken in Wormkin mm -hmm. to power up your units as well. So we haven't really even talked about them, but they exist in all these combos, and they're pretty busted. So yeah. you could always abuse the hell out of that to win. I feel but... like... We, I, I feel like it's kind of been implied since every time we talk about Wormkin secondary, we talk, we also just go, hey, Echo Infusion, Echo Transfer, these cards are broken. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I imagine we're all considering that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to Cranberry's point, though, about only finding six consumed cards, one of the most important things, uh, two things to remember, you can't really have a run, unless you're like crazy unlucky, you shouldn't have a run where you don't have many consume spells because there's a shop upgrade that just adds consume to any of your cards. 
So if you just need cards that etch, you can get that at the yeah. shop. And you that, can duplicate that is true. as well. Yeah, and that's actually a very important reason why the base card for Echo Rite is a ping that you can put magic power in. So you can make it consume plus 20, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, well, I guess while we're on the topic, Echo Break is a really strong card. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a... Like, yeah, Torch Plus. Yeah. It's you fuckers. You probably... fuckers. When we did the starter card tier list, I defended Echo Break. How dare you now come to me? Cranberry, you think I remember what the fuck I said in the starter card <laughs> no. tier list? I don't remember what I said last week, Cranberry. Yeah. I mean, I, the thing is, is, I mean, functionally, it is Torch, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like the same thing. So, I mean, I think I had them both at A tier, right? I don't think it's S tier, but it's like, you have to consider that my S tiers were what, like Fracture and Root Seeds because they're absolutely out of control. Yeah, I mean, they're ridiculous. Like for as good as Echo Break is, oh boy, I'm doing seven damage with a ping. I mean, Fracture can represent like 120 damage if you have enough Echoes on the floor and it just... It triggers everything because it's also infused. I, it's kind of crazy compared, but like Echo Break is good for Echo Right because of the 20 and consume. And that, that's really it. I mean, that, that's why the card is the way it is. So fair enough. I guess they made it scale with Echo so it at least wasn't a clone of Torch, but it basically functionally is, right? So yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I've been finding lately is that I've been putting, if I have nothing else to do, I can put plus 10 piercing onto Echo Break and then that'll kill uh, like almost any backliner for you, which is cool. And you can do that with Torch, but on the Divinity, there's enemies with like 20 health that'll die to that card sometimes. I've just been having, I've been having situations where the Echo Break is a really st like 20 damage ping. Card's I mean, crazy. I'll usually take like uh, uh, the, the AoE one. You know that one, resonance. Ancient resonance. resonance. Yeah. resonance yeah. I usually, I usually, try, I, I, I take that pretty highly. So I'll usually just have that, and I'll give that uh, plus ten and true stone. Yeah. Whatever. Recently, and by recently, I mean today. I uploaded an episode, and up until Seraph, I was calling ancient resonance ancient synergy. So, ah. Yeah. One. Yeah. Rough. Big complaint about this game: they need to stop naming things so similarly, please. I'm the cards you. are like they have really weird names in general. Like, mm. as, look at some of the Wormkin cards. You've got like Soul Crushing Guilt and <laughs> like, what the hell, man? I you never gotten hit with the Soul Crushing Guilt. <laughs> All right, that's how I feel after playing Monster Train. Sometimes <laughs> every time you do an infinite Soul Crushing Guilt on yourself, days three. I mean, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what clan are we even on? Where am I? I think we're I somewhere think... in Awoken. It was was this Exile. It's uh, Echo Ray it... with Awoken. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. If I didn't say I'm putting it in A tier two, I don't remember what I said. But I think we're I think we're finishing this one and moving on to uh, yeah. the next. That's where did you basement. put this? Yeah, I added A tier as well. Yeah, okay, A tier. All right, let's move on. It's a uh, Wormkin Stygian. Das, you want to take this one to start? Yeah, yeah, I'm down. This is. I mean, one of the nice things about this is that an infused card is in this clan combo, basically an incant. So you can get double value. You will always find incant or inspire or something. And all of the cards are the same. They work both ways. So it's they're really functional. And it's interesting because I think you can reasonably go both ways, but it kind of sucks to mix them, right? Like if you're going incants, I would prefer an incant infusion as opposed to an inspire infusion because with incants, you worry about fitting a lot of things on your floor in order to, you know, get more value. And all of the inspire ones either aren't as strong in the case of keeper, or they make you bigger in the case of shard soul carver. Whereas with inspires, I feel like thanks to the wormkin relics being so powerful and you can get so many free echoes in so many ways I feel like Inspire is a stronger trigger than Incant. So you can get away with having a bigger dude and maybe only one of them with like multi-strike or something. So I, I usually pick a line and stick with it. And that's pretty good. Uh, there are some fun things you can do in this clan combo. You get a Glug Shark, which is hilarious. Eh. <laughs> but, um, you know, 
Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I have it in A tier because I think that any clan combo with Chief that has a spell in a starter form that you can play on Chief's floor that doesn't take up space is really, really strong. So, fair enough. Uh, I th- I think the sh- the strength that this clan has is that uh, you can stay pretty open for a while and and not sacrifice too much in the early game. Like like Dusk was saying, like Incant and Inspire kind of work the same way, but you don't want to really mix them too hard because like they don't, you know, you can't really play a, a Keeper of Echoes with a Siren. It doesn't work that well. You usually just want two Sirens or you just want like, you know, two Keepers or whatever you're doing. You don't want to, they don't work well together so much. But in the early game, it's fine. And you can, you know, the cards that are good for one are usually good for the other. So you can... You can, you know, just take, you know, infuse spells in the early game, and then you can see what units you find. If you have a good incant line based on units, you can go that way. If you have a good inspire line with wormkin units, you can go that way. So I think that's a really good thing. This and also for uh, exile wormkin, they more or less the same thing. They have that in common. Yeah, um, no, I, I super agree. The flexibility is probably the most important thing about this clan combo because you can. Like you said, do whatever you need to do in the early game, find a line, and then commit to it after, you know, Talos or whatever. And it's pretty convincing. So Yeah, like when you look at something like Umbra, when you when you try to stay open, you end up taking some morsel cards usually. Because you're like, hey, I might have a gorge line. And if you don't play gorge, those morsels are worthless. Uh, whereas in this clan, you can take like, uh, you know, if you're trying to play Incant or Inspire and you see... Uh, an infused ice storm you can go hey i can use this in either it works it it does both uh and that's something that a lot of other clans really can't do that well so yeah yeah exactly i don't know anything I mean, bad voice this combo is fine like this i don't feel particularly excited to play it you got good units to keep chef alive you got good answers for relentless if you're playing reef you got I don't know. The problem that I face with it is if you're not playing Reef, I don't really like this combo for Chef. There's not a whole lot you can do with Infector or Corruptor, because Corruptor's too big. You have three space, so you can't put two Sirens behind or anything like that. I guess you have Sweepers. But... Yeah, you can put Totems behind him, though. And they're totems. actually really good. Have you have you ever done the, like the Lodestone Totem with Multi-Strike behind Corruptor Chief? It mm-hmm. absolutely obliterates. Yeah, but like... I feel like Lodestone Totem just obliterates everything. That card's broken. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. But you could also do it like Glacial Seal. Seal. Like, it's actually fine. I I, I I prefer Guardian Stone, honestly, but yeah. yeah. You prefer Guardian Stone, Wow. What a a (laughs) bull. Dude, I had a win with Glacial Seal recently. I don't want to hear it. He was an important part of my line. Yeah, I had that Hellrush game where I played Glacial Seal and everyone else died at floor six Um, but me. Yeah, I, you, that I, was actually I, big brain. <laughs> we we did kind of gloss over, but I think it is important to note that Corruptor Chief does make the sweepers in Stygian actually pretty good. I feel like uh, that they yeah. they give a lot of damage. They give a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean it's like yeah. you just need multi strike one, and then eight echoes is three hundred and twenty damage. Like that clears every unit, so it, it wins. Uh, it's fine. It's not saving them from my wrath. I'm putting them B tier. I guess fair. I just, I think it's yeah, fair. It's fine. Like there, there's plenty of good options, but compared to the other options you have with the other secondary clans, I just don't like this. No, I mean that's totally fair. I mean my scoring on this being a tier is driven pretty hard by how strong Chief is in general, right? And I think you can always find a line that Chief just crushes something with. So yeah, I mean realistically, I feel like honestly, if we were to sit here and rank these. Overall, I would probably just put every single Wormkin combo in A tier and then throw one in S tier. I think that all of them are pretty strong. Wormkin's a really strong clan. Yeah, I mean, I definitely have some in the B and C tiers in this particular one. So I've got a little bit of diversity. But yeah, it is pretty heavily weighted towards A tier. Yeah, I think that you're like, if, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, it's like you drop probably default melting and exile Hellhorn down. And then otherwise, it's like you slap most of these in A tier. Chef is really strong, and it's pretty easy to find options for him. And so is I mean, Echo Right. I think Echo Right. But right now, Echo Right's my favorite champion. I really enjoy playing him. So I'm a little biased for the boy. 
No, that's fair. I mean, I, I'll I'll be the first to admit that you know Soulguard is still my favorite champion to play, but I, he has some really trash tier starts, so I, it's fair. You know how I feel about Soulguard. Well, you know how Kramer has gaslit me <laughs> feeling about Soulguard. <laughs> yep, that's fair. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, like this combo is fine though. My big my big complaint about it is that you can't play Chef Siren Siren, and I like playing Chef Siren Siren. Also worth mentioning there, this is the only clan combo with zero movement cards for your units. Mm. Yeah, I suppose oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, you, I mean you have um, yeah, Siren Song doesn't count. It doesn't do your units. So fair yeah. enough. So where you play your units is where they stick. Well, technically, any clan combo has an option to move your units. You just have to hit old magic. Yeah, or you could trap shoot them. But yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Or Polyclaw works too, right? Or Polyclaw enemy only? Polyclaw, for whatever reason, is enemy only, yeah. Yeah, probably because you could play... You would think it would just move you to the top floor, but then you play it on your own unit, and they end up in the pyre, and then you get for the greater good reworked again. <laughs> yeah, true. Make make greater good greater good again. <laughs> that card would actually be really good if it were a little more consistent. The problem is you just have so much variance in the different units I, it spawns. I hate it. I hate it so much. I, Every time I play it, I only see the same three units. I like. I'm pretty sure there's like five or six it, of them. But... Put it. Yeah, put them in the back. Six. Put them in the back. Then, like, why are they got to be in the front? Why do you got to keep putting like four HP units in the front? Yeah, I mean the. the yeah, the point is that they're supposed to either have a summon trigger or an extinguish trigger, so you want them to chump lock and die. But then they tossed in, like, I don't know, the 25 by 3 quill marksman that just kind of snipes a dude and then dies, and it's like, okay, well, why is he there? I don't know. And they're not all created equal, right? So you've got, like, okay, this run could be saved if I see the full heal. Oh, I guess I'm just going to give some melee weakness and I've died as a result. Like, you can't rely on it is like, the big problem. You know, you know what they should do? They should just make it a choice. You should like you should select the unit that is summons. Like would that be that busted of a card then? You think they have a mechanic implemented yeah. to do that? <laughs> that's like <laughs> Yeah, but like this explode. I think it shouldn't be that hard. In a perfect world. It shouldn't world. be. You're right. I, and I agree. If you could choose, that would be incredible. But they don't, don't have even, a system I don't even think. The, I don't even think the card would be that amazing, though, then. Like, you're just, like, you're getting the optimal chump blocker out of it. And that's not even amazing. Like, I, mean, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, if you have holdover minus two on it, it answers survivability every turn if you can choose. Because you can get permanent stealth. You could get permanent melee weakness and just go crazy on the enemies. Yeah, I, that's true. You could even maybe, you, maybe to the tone it down a bit. Then like you even have the the extinguished sycophant dude. You just scale your own floor constantly by getting this thing killed. Like it actually is really strong, but you'd have to I, tone him down if you could pick. Well, I, I I feel I feel like that actually brings it in line with as strong as the other options are. Because in that same cavern event, you have sapstone, which is absolutely busted on a replayable endless unit, and you have. Uh, Melee, you have melee weakness on strike, which is also unbelievably busted as a as a as an, abil yeah. an ability. So like, I, I think, think making right. yeah, I think making that card on par with those other cavern event options is not the craziest. thing. Uh, the biggest problem with that is it's going to be hard for any card that isn't outright broken to compete, simply because you can overstack your units. The way that the upgrade system works for cavern events is weighted to make those upgrades so strong. Like mm -hmm. a plus 10 is not that good. But when you have three upgrades already, thanks to Pyrestone housing and you chuck a fourth on for free, that plus 10 represents, I don't know, probably like 10 inspire triggers or something in order to get you a little bit further along. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's suddenly this bone shine event is ridiculous, right? Like it's really weird how that works. It's hard to make it balance against other options as a result. So I don't know. It's tough. I guess we got a little off topic. What were we talking oh, about? Tiny, tiny bit. Uh, <laughs> how did we get there? I mentioned old magic. You didn't even talk about old magic. Yeah. I mean, I, I oh, yeah. I said the word for the greater good and then Kramer yeah, yeah, yeah. first in it. Oh, yeah. dialogue. <laughs> yep. if, you yep. ever, if you ever bring that card up, someone gets very mad in this call. Yep. <laughs> yeah, fair anyway, enough. I'm Cranberry, I wanted to say I'm pretty sure that what you're actually arguing for right now is them nerfing the other two options in that cavern event. 
It wouldn't be the worst thing either, honestly. Like, if you're talking about, like, you know, if you wanted to balance something, those two effects are just unbelievably strong. Yeah, that it's event's true. crazy. It's almost as strong as the make a unit one space event. Mm-hmm. But that's for another tier list. Cranberry, would you like to do Exile Wormkin Stygian? It's the same as the other one. There's not almost no difference here, I feel like. Uh, you you can... There's only one I don't thing know. I would add. It's the it's the gifts for a guard extravaganza, right? Uh, you just yeah. kind of like, I want to etch, and it's like, all right, gifts for a guard on holdover, let's send it. And you just blast every card real quick. And you can you can etch something like, I don't know, 20 cards in three turns or something. Uh, it's That's fair. It's pretty strong from that perspective, but you will run your deck out of spells very fast. So you kind of need to... You need to beef up your deck to make that work or have consume returns like worm connectings. Mm. Otherwise, yeah, you're right. It basically plays the same. So I have it in the same tier, A tier. I, I think, again, when we, when we were talking before about uh, Hellhorned uh, with this clan combo, there's a lot of good consume cards. There's Gifts for a Guard, which isn't a consume card, but it makes cards get consumed. What other consumed cards do we have that are useful? We have Urchin Spines, yeah. uh, the Snowflake, uh, Crystalline Seeds, whatever I think is what it's called. Yeah. What, what, what do we got like, besides that? I, I guess I we, have, wanna... we have putting spell damage on spells again and stuff like that. Yeah, I do want to give a little bit of credit in this clan combo to Urchin Spines coupled with Power of Knowledge. It is one of the few ways where you can spell weakness and kill the Divinity with spell weakness because you can power up Power of Knowledge which is a targeted damage spell that Stygian has none of otherwise outside of like flash freeze. And so what you can do here is you just send urchin spines on repeater a bunch of times, and then you just consume a crap ton of garbage and you then play a 200 damage power of knowledge and one shot the divinity on turn three or something. And it works really well. That's like one additional line I think I need to kind of vocalize here is like, it's a cool one. So give that a try if you ever kind of like get it to line up. I hate that spell. I'm sure it is cool in a deck like in, the, in, the, in some Stygian combos, but I hate power of knowledge. I don't like it. I don't trust it. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like Memento Mori, but actually playable, right? And then yeah, that's it's fair. like when you start with Memento Mori, you're like, all right, I'm probably going to remove this eventually. And then at some point in your run, you're like, I mean, I guess it's doing like 100 damage. I'll keep it fine. And then I don't know, by the end of the run, it's got minus one, minus one, and it does like 200 damage. And you're like, I, I don't hate it as much as before. Whereas Power of Knowledge, it feels like it actually bridges the mid game a little better. And it can also just outright kill things in the early game with three consumes in your start. So it's. I don't know. It's good. I like it, but I pretty much exclusively like it with Exile Wormkin. I think it's really bad on the Chief side because you're probably not leaning etches. So I think this clan combo is good. <laughs> Big brave. surprise. What a, what a, what a brave, <laughs> I'm brave man. I'm putting it in A tier. I put the other version of this combo in B tier because I think it's worse than this one as well. Uh, yeah, I, so my big feeling here that we have not touched on, one of the main reasons that Chef is sitting there alone in B tier and Echo Wright's hanging out cool guy in A tier is because he's two space and Chef is three. And every Stygian unit is two space. Uh, that matters. Is there a three space Stygian unit? No, it's actually one of their design requirements. They're not allowed to have three space units. Yeah, so you can play Echo Wright unit unit, and that is good. Something that we haven't mentioned, and I kind of saved for this clan combo because I, this is the first one that I think it's pertinent. Echo Wright has crazy stats. Yeah, Tethys eat your heart out, right? Like, look yeah. at Repeater, and then look at Tethys anything. Like, he, Repeater has 100 you... damage and, like, 20 life. Yeah. Like ridiculous the, the the pure i don't get the I, I i still to this day feel like the purifies a mechanic is bad like it just just saying hey by the way no frostbite is just like poor tethys yeah it's you know it's well, you can do it's unfortunate it's you, you can almost. right but like the main problem i have is that it was kind of like a, a cheap an easy way to quote unquote answer how broken some of these sources of status effects are because yeah it's like cold channel and 
Reap Chief are the only two reasons that Purify exists, period, hard stop. If they had actually just balanced those paths better, then it would have been fine, right? Like there are ways of making those abilities effective and useful without outright killing the divinity. And in a world where they did that, they don't need Purify. But because they just didn't do that, you get Purify as the result. And this is the meta we live in as a result. So I, it sucks. I don't want to call it laziness, but I think it was a, a bad choice. So just I just realized he's Soulguard the Martyr and Teth has died for his sins. Like, it's just like he, he's just. I don't know. It's just it's just sad for Tethys. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with Voyex. If you can somehow get Chillwind to Relentless and get her attacking into the Divinity, she's going to kill that thing. Like, 40 Frostbite with a few rounds, that adds up really quick. But the the only time it really sucks is if you don't actually win in Relentless because he purifies and then goes in 1v1s your Pyre. So that's tough when that happens. Also, with Echo right in this clan combo, uh, I like Repeater, even though... So Urchin's fine, as we talked about, but a big thing, too, is if you're playing an incant line, Repeater is usually just going to give you a free consume spell every turn, which is another incant. You basically get plus one draw with Repeater, which is cool as well. And yeah, true. I don't think there's anything interesting you do with Marsh Lord here. Marsh Lord can just kind of exist. Like, there's nothing... Yeah exciting for martial lord martial lord is fine because you play martial lord and you play one strong unit behind martial lord and you get a free overstack the floor crazy chump blocker but mm -hmm. yeah i think this combo is good i think it's better than the chef version by a little bit fair i think that's a fair take all right, I'm doing Wormkin Umbra because I want to go first. This is like one of my favorite combos in the game. I think it's so silly. I'm putting it in A tier. I love this shit. You get so many dumb things you can do with this combo. Let's, that... well, let's begin. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, yeah. So you got plus 20 attack AoE on the chef, right? You know that uh, Corruptor, I believe we called it? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. You play that with Morsel Maker infused with Morsel Master. And he, you just make, like, you make rumble morsels, as we've called them in the past. Those guys just fucking decimate. They do, like, they do so much damage. You make, like, four units that do 80 to 100 damage each. I love that. Uh, you also have Reap Chef. There's some pretty good options to keep Reap Chef alive in Umbra. You use Morsel Master, or Morsel Maker as a chump blocker. And then you put Crucible Collector on the top floor to solo carry for you, because the unit's broken. <laughs> Killing me. Yeah. yeah. You know, he solo carried that run, and you're never going to change my mind. Uh, mainly that's it, though. Like, really, there's not... You, these clans are weird because Chef is big and the other units are big, but Gorge sucks, so I don't really feel like you have to take points away because you're not gorging, because I don't want to fucking gorge anyway. And Shade Splitter slash Blink are contextless spells for purple, which are just fine. Like, you have five, no matter mm -hmm. what, contextless cards that you get to play anywhere that give you an echo so yeah i like this combo i think it's really fun it may not be truly a tier but i think it's a really fun combo so i'm putting it in a tier yeah i've got i've got this one and the echo right version of it in b tier myself i i, I struggle a lot i don't actually struggle with this but i because chief and echo right are both really strong so once you see one of those champions you kind of feel really good about your run in my opinion but my main problem with this is that the two the lines from the two clans just do not play well together whatsoever. Um, there are no sweepers outside of what Glareminder, which is always present, uh, but is a rare unit. So you don't really have excellent corruptor hits. You have you can't put alloyed construct behind corruptor because you have to feed alloyed construct. So there's that as well. So you don't even get free multi-strike in this combo, really. Wormkin itself has no multi-strike infusion. So you're, you're basically kind of relegated to, okay, I guess I have to hit multi-strike in a shop or do some jank with morsels. And yeah, it works. The morsel thing is cool. I actually like the self-infused morsel master the most because what you do is then you play one morsel and it creates four and your whole floor is filled as a result. But... But I think that works. That's fine. It's nice when you have a one space unit. 
But that's basically it. There's nothing else I want to play on a floor with Chief ever. And that kind of sucks, right? I mean, I do like the what you mentioned about Morsel Maker Tank. I think that's a good one. I've done that before. I, my personal favorite is what, Damage Shield 3 and then Endless or something. And you just kind of throw mm -hmm. him to the abyss. And it's pretty good. But, but yeah. Otherwise, you're kind of relying on a gorge plan on top floor. And you have all the problems associated with that. I honestly, I, I mean, I think I need to move it down to C tier, quite frankly. I think it has bad relentless options outside of just get carried by Wormkin. I don't know. I could go B or C on this. Uh, I don't like this clan combo, though. Cru Crucible Collector? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to point out one thing. I got to stand up for my boy Shadow Eater. You said that we have no sweepers. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? I, there is one thing I've wanted to try. What if you did Shadow Eater infused with Kin Host Pupa for the Strike Apply Reap effect? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, and then you do uh, you do Repeater, and you repeat back a Gorge Spike every turn. Yes, and then... So, yeah, repeat a Spell Chain Gorge Spike and a Rubble Morsel somehow. If you actually had Decayed Decoy, you could apply something like... 50 plus reap to a floor with this by the way it's some mad genius level shit it's like the if i ever can pull that off yeah <laughs> like, yeah like, like yes but that doesn't make this good <laughs> no i agree it doesn't but it it is something i now want to try <laughs> that's fair um I, I i i initially put this in b tier my logic was you know it's wormkin but with the umbra tax so it goes down to B. Um, and I'm going to leave it there for now, but I think I think Dusk made some compelling points. I have nothing really new to add to this. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, uh, ad hominem, I think you're a coward. I'll, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I said, all right, I, take, I take it back. <laughs> I apologize. I'll release an apology video alongside this video. I apologize, too. I won't kill you. I don't believe you. I'll let the I'll let the birds handle that. Yeah, no, no, not the eagles. <laughs> All right, the next hour of this video is me explaining to Cranberry why he can't fight an eagle. But no, I don't. I don't actually think that Umbra secondary is that bad unless your main clan struggles, and I don't think Wormkin struggles. Right? Ultimately, you have some good Wormkin only lines in every Wormkin combo, and. Umbra is fine because you just get a contextless purple card, so it doesn't actively yeah. hurt you. And Wormkin's yeah, a strong I, clan. I think one thing to mention is that this is actually a really, no matter like for both for both this and the exiled variant, this is a very strong early game. Mm -hmm. Like you know, just just feeding morsels to a to a a chef can basically you know kill the first two bosses for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it it's nice. You have the you know, it, it, fuck Umbra. I'll say it. I don't like him. Don't. I, I like him. It's tough. It's I actually really like Umbra. I just they're really bad. And so that's kind of the unfortunate contradiction there. How my, dare you? It's true. I'm sorry. I but like it. my my main issue here is that, yes, Wormkin's really strong, but there are only so many things that are really strong in Wormkin paired with Chief. And it's pretty easy to see a weird combo of banner units that don't really jive with what you're doing. And it's like, it's like let's say you're playing Decayer, right? You've picked that because it makes sense. You look through your banners. You, you avoid Umbra because, of course, you do. And you see, I don't know, Bogfly Chrysalis and Kinhost Carapace. You're like, okay, I guess I could do Endless Egg, but it doesn't play well with Decayer. They compete too much on echoes and i have a run where i've put up recently that actually showed that it barely won it scratched out the victory and it nearly lost on my win streak because they were competing so hard so i it can be easy to say yeah wormkin's really strong but what if you just don't see keeper of echoes right like what are you doing i i don't know like yeah, I mean, like, you miss Keeper, you miss Shard Soul Carver, okay, there's a ton of other units, you can roll that way, how do you resolve the run? And it can be really bad, you can get put in situations that feel unwinnable, if you have nothing that offers any value from your secondary clan, and I mean, it's Umbra, so, yeah, I guess you could take a Crucible Collector and feed morsels up top, 
and just, I don't know, high roll winged technology and then Pardon have me? Chef Solo your entire run otherwise. Uh, what? I don't, that doesn't sound right. I, he, he wins because he's good and he deserves it and not because of anything else. Yeah, I, for I sure. Want, I want a relic that makes morsels also quick, so that way this this <laughs> line that Voyage wants to play works really well. Hey, which line? The one with the uh, the one with the uh, sh- spine chief, and then corruptor with the morsel master, morsel maker, infusion, or whatever, oh. vice versa. Yeah, no, that shit works without quick though. It's not. But I'm just saying you could do it with, with if you had quick, you do it top floor, and it would be like you know oh, no problem. Man. Yeah, I mean overall though, I don't. Oh, it's a bird. It was a bird. I, they're coming. They're coming. Yeah, I, I heard like two clicks on my window, and I was like, "Yo, is that a bird pecking the window?" No, I no, warned you, threatening you. Oh no! Yeah, um, uh, if I don't finish this video, you guys know what to do. Uh, Arrest like, me? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. If if I don't make it to the end of this video, uh, send the birds at cranberry next. Thank you. I don't know. Ultimately, I feel like we should go to the next combo. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Uh, Dusk, you want to take this one? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is Echo Right with Umbra. I have this a little better because you can do things like take space, put Echo Right behind Alloy Construct, and then use Echo Right to keep Alloy Construct alive. Shellsmith will keep Morsels alive, which is nice. You can repeater a shelter to do the same thing. I think this is significantly better than the Chief combo version of this, so that's why I have it in B. Uh, but you do still compete a little bit, right? Because there's while there are a few better usages of cards and units, especially, they still struggle a bit, right? Again, your your crucibles aren't doing anything. Your in this case, your morsel maker, morsel master are a little less useful overall. Uh, but but you can do it. I think this one feels a little better overall. I also think Echo Right is a better self-contained within Wormkin sort of champion. I think that there are other lines that just kind of jive with it. You can put an egg behind him. You can take Marshall or put an egg in front of him. You do whatever the hell you want. Uh, basically works with anything. So that's why I've got this one in B. I've got a, I've got a new item for my to-do list that I want to try out. I want to put Morsel Made Infusion onto a Bog Chrysalis and then just feed it a lot. Do you think that would work? The only problem is once you hatch the egg, then... Only the front bog fly actually eats mm. the morsels. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Uh, uh, bog worm uh, cocoon instead. Then. Yeah, I mean that would be strong. I mean it, it's it's annoying because if you gave anything in Umbra or anything fusion, it suddenly becomes playable and great. Right? <laughs> it's like the Crucible dogs are exceptional when you have morsel made in fusion. Why? Because you can play morsels or you can stick them in the back line and they can still eat like it's it's so aggravating anyway it's, we don't need to talk about that it's really funny though because basically what you just said is umbra becomes a lot stronger if you remove the way morsels work and you're 100 percent correct mm-hmm. yeah morsels yeah. are a fucking nightmare but they're so fun and they're cool i love the idea of spawning a little dude that's carrying a plate of jewels and then you just chomp down on that that's awesome like thematically it's so cool but yeah, the way that it's, like, it's implemented is just like garbage. It's like the bugs from Lion King. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. It's like the bugs from Lion King. You want to eat them. You're not supposed to, but they look so good. Yeah, morsels suck. Yeah, I mean, Cranberry, Voix, do you have anything to add there? I'm putting this in B tier. I... I think it's worse than the chef variation. Just a little bit. I also don't want to put every single Echo Right combo in A tier, so... You know, I think this uh, is the worst of the options. I think I said it before, but I put both of these in B tier for the Umbra attacks. Yeah. It, 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 you know, fair. And one thing I'll say about Echo Right is you do get consistent. If you're playing Repeater, you can get consistent morsel generation out of Repeater if you have like a packed morsels or something like that. And you can True. make plus 20 consume planks with Repeater that do well. And that's okay. But it's not really anything spectacular, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, if you have the perils of production line for Ember generation, you can also do stupid things with Furnace Tap here. But yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. One other thing I wanted to mention is I have Furnace Tapped a morsel with the Wormkin Umbra line one time. How'd that go? <laughs> it killed an enemy. Cool. Yeah. Good success. I need a, I need a relic that gives morsels multi-strike. And quick. 
And quick, yeah. You know what? Can <laughs> I get the actually can I get train steward relic but for morsels? That would make morsels pretty formidable, yeah. That would make them... That'd be that'd be that'd be actually really cool. Like a relic that like buffs your morsels but then makes it so they can't be eaten. And then you have to like play a line now where you're using the morsels as your units. Oh no, I can't play gorge units. Oh wait, that's just the game on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do like the idea of battle morsels, but oh, battle morsels. <laughs> yeah, hey, Mary, you want to take Wormkin melting here? Not really. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got it. I got it. Yeah, go now, for this, it. this suffers from the same thing the Hellhorn combo has, right? Yep. I I think that Primitive Mold is crazy powerful in this combo, but then I think that Dregs are pretty abysmal in this combo. Uh, I have it as a B tier as a result. But if I were ranking them separately, I would put Primitive Mold here in S tier because you want to know what the best way of keeping Chef is, uh, Chef alive is rather, just let him die and then bring him back constantly. And turns out that's really strong, actually. And it's in your starting cars, which is just out of control. And then I think Dregs I have really low. I would put them maybe not as bad as Queen Zimpling here. I think maybe like a D tier, but... Uh, they're still pretty rough because early game, especially you don't have space on chef's floor. Uh, they are one space units that you can stick in the back, which are pretty good for corruptor, but they burn out. So you pretty much have to solve the burnout problem in that case. So it's, it's okay, depending on when you play them, but I don't know. I think in general it's pretty rough. So I I've got it at B tier as a result. I had it at C tier, but that's just because the thought has never occurred to me to reform cheap. That's actually a pretty cool line. I'm going to keep it in C tier for now because I don't respect it yet, but I'm going to definitely try it out and I'll get back to you on it. I'm sure I'm sure it's good. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Actually, no, I think I, there's obviously like the dregs versus Queen's implings, right? Is like the big thing here. These are the two clans that have units as your starting cards. Um, I don't I don't know if I, I think I might like imps more. I think I might like the Queen's implings a little bit more than the uh, the dregs. Queen's Implings, uh, they do their 10 damage up front, whereas the Dregs, uh, if you play them behind, they're doing 9 damage, which is pretty cool. But if you're, if you're you know, if you're trying to chump with them or things like that, they die instantly. I mean, not instantly, but 3 HP, right? Not a whole lot. Yeah. I think, I think, I think the big thing that the Queen's Implings have going for them is that they are a very good infusion onto a Transcendent. I think there is some value in there that there's not in, the Dregs just have no value in regards to that. I guess you can do things where you can play them in like a burnout line still sometimes, but I don't know. Yeah, I think the big difference for me is just that Dreg is free, right? If yeah, I draw three fractures and a Dreg, I can play everything, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that matters because early game, you never know what you're going to draw. You've got 22 cards and most of it's trash. So you could get a hand where, oh no, here are all my purple spells. At least with Dreg, you can play everything. Uh, with the Queen Zimpling, you'd be competing a little bit. And I, I do think the three HP for as little as it matters, it does matter early game, right? Because you have a two attack forge disciple in front and a five mm -hmm. one in the back. So technically a drag does tank everything on a floor, whereas That's a queen true. impling would not. So uh, it, there's a little bit of a difference there, but, but yeah, I think they're pretty comparable in the end when it comes to playing well with chief, which is to say not very at all. Uh, Although you're absolutely right, you know, see Transcendent when you have Queen Zimpling. All you need is Transcendent and an Endless, and you've won the game, essentially. So that's always fun. Uh, I put this in B tier. Drag put uh, drag D tier. Uh, primitive Mold A tier. Reform Egg. That's my statement. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you're right. We haven't talked about it, but Reform Egg is big. Yeah. I mean, you guys covered the rest. The only thing that I thought of that you didn't say is Reform Egg. It's good, but also, uh, like, the only two times I've played Reform Egg, I... It's... Okay, look, I, I put uh, the plus two size event on my egg and then lost the run because I couldn't keep playing the egg. And that's my fault. I respect that that's my fault, but I wanted to make the egg big. Yo, I had a run recently where Major Refraction is the only reason I actually won, so... It's not uh, necessarily yeah. bad, but it's pretty rare. It's 30-30 in stats, and that's usually that's like five rounds of scaling a lot of times, which is cool. But, you know, 
Uh, like, you can reform eggs. Bogfly is good. Uh, the other ones are weird. Uh, even better if you have Hardened Hull. And you just fill your floors up with burnout dudes that die, and then you make them again. And Primitive Mold yep. cool for that. And you bring back the chef mm. as well, and it's all cool. It's all good. Yeah, just reform everything. Forehead. Groovy. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, fuck Drag. Piece of shit. Yeah. But I think he's better than Queen Zimplin. True. All right. Well, Cranberry forfeited his go, so I'm going to take Exile Wormkin. No, nothing. I'm doing this one. I don't believe <laughs> this. <laughs> Uh, I, I like this one a little bit more because I feel like it's just overall more consistent. You don't have to worry about drags ruining your day. Um, yeah, but, but like it, you can like you can use repeater as like a burnout enabler sometimes if you're like, oh, my only source of burnout extension is this one hallow drippings. You can do stuff like that sometimes. There's some OK consume spells in the clan. You've got like uh, the the spike as well. So yeah. you you can you can slot it into a burnout strategy, and it's not the best champion to do that with, obviously, but like it's it's passable. So I like it. Yeah, this is another case where what I like to do on this one is play a burnout line on like mid or bottom, and then I just stick the echo right up top with repeater, and I repeater a wax and spike every turn, and your burnout floor goes crazy. And oh no, Echo Right died to sweep from the divinity. I don't know, just reform him. It's fine. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it works out really well. Uh, it's another case where Primitive Mold is just so much better than Dreg because having the five density of reforms is huge. And if you miss that, you have to be a little more protective of Echo Right. Mm -hmm. Usually, in that case, I won't be able to go all in repeater and I'm actually just playing some random etches on his floor for Shell Smith value, essentially, just to keep him alive. But. Uh, but yeah, I think notionally it's really good having Echo right with anything from Melting. Uh, the other cool thing I want to mention here that matters is Sacrificial Resurrection. Um, this is a really fun interaction that I rarely get to use, but I love it when it comes to play because Etch triggers when a card is consumed, not when you play a card that says consume. So when you click Sacrificial Resurrection on a hand of, I don't know, 10 cards, you, you burn nine of them because one of them is the resurrection itself. And that's nine etch triggers. And that is also the only way you can actually convert your dead weights into etch triggers, which is pretty cool. So uh, that can be a humongous infusion of damage with like first of kin or anything that etches. Uh, I've done it before with bog wormling when you hatch that dude and then you just etch nine times. I mean, he kills everything at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just so strong. So so yeah, don't sleep on that. I've got it in A tier because I think it's solid. Uh, I think that the Echo Ray brings it up a bit. But yeah, dregs are still a little bit of a struggle. Not as much, though. Not as much as with uh, Spine Chief by far. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I'm putting in A tier as well. Uh, like an hour ago when we started this, I said there was going to be something that I would remember at the end of the video. And this is the part where I have to remember the other spell that I think is cool to force consume on and put in the loop is Crushing Demise. You can use like a it's like you basically can use Repeater as a fake holdover and you can do that with Crushing Demise and Return Soul. And otherwise, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, Reform. Yeah, it's egg. a good call. Uh, one other thing that I guess applies to both of these combos that I forgot about in the last one, same thing I said with Hellhorned, uh, Tombs are worse. A little bit. You can use tombs to keep your Reap Chef alive, but if you're trying to play a full floor, you usually don't have space for a tomb. Mm -hmm. That is true, yeah. And uh, I don't think there's anything else that I really have to say. I guess you could put plus 20 consume mm -hmm. onto... What's the... Mortal Entrapment is the card? The one that Cranberry hates? Hate hate yeah, that yeah. card. <laughs> you Good still card. hate that? Good card. I mean, I like I like it a lot more now, but I still don't like it that much. I'll take one of it. I mean, you put con if you put plus one, you consume on it, and you can repeat that card. It's like what a hundred and fifteen damage plus three days every turn. You have to be able to pay for it though. If you if yeah. you uh, if you uh, what's it called? Uh, return soul. It cost two. Yeah, true. Not so bad. Uh, the big. Uh, the Big point here, though, is that dregs are less impactful because you're not as in focused on echoes here. That's the main thing you want to hit on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. Are we finally free? I Hang think on. we are.
Yeah, I gotta ask Dusk a question about Arcadian real quick, though. Oh god, alright, lay it on me. Alright, so, if I remember correctly, one of the Arcadian champion paths gives consume to all of your starter spells. Is that still there? That is still there, yes. That's the yeah. owl. Yeah, so that's just broken with Wormkin, right? You know, it's interesting because I actually think Echo Rite is still better. I really was, I really thought this was going to be good. And uh, by the time, I don't know if I'm spoiling an upcoming episode or not. I, I tried this and I think it's actually not as good as I wanted it to be. Because while it's strong, you run into the problem that you burn all these things and then then what? I don't know. You don't have the repeater. You don't have the the etch value, right? You're trying to etch with just first of kin or something. You yeah. don't get any shell smith. You're not repeating anything. There's no egg benefit. Uh, so I, it ended up underperforming. And I was really sad about that, actually. Yeah, I guess you just got to hit the apply sweep card. Yeah, I mean, like, there's there are other things you could have done. Mm -hmm. I really, yeah. I just was like, I looked at this run and I was like, here it is. It's happening. I want first of kin infusion on something and then I'm going to just etch the hell out of this floor. And my damage was excellent. And I was like, Oh, I guess I just can't keep my floor alive for shit. And then I only, there was some way to convert etching into armor for all my units. Exactly. Right. I was like, I damn, I wish I just had echo right here. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I guess when I was thinking about it, I was actually thinking about it with Echo Right, and you can't have both champions. So it is less interesting. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Cool. Anything else? Or is this a wrap? I think that's a wrap. Thank God. <laughs> we are free. All right. Time to start doing every card one week at a time. Oh, God. Can we, can we, do, can we do Torch first? Uh, yeah, for, for next week, join us as we tier list just Torch. <laughs> I think Torch is in Torch tier. Yeah, it's going, yeah, Torch mm -hmm. tier, and then next week we'll put something into uh, Drag tier. Oof, that's rough. Yeah. That would be really confusing. Imagine ranking everything, but ranking it as tiers, but it's tiers that we placed previous starter card tiers in. So oh, you have like, to go back and cross-reference a prior tier list video. It's like one of those conspiracy theorists trying to sort some <laughs> nonsense out. You gotta have fucking that, that is some, that is some Pepe lines. Sylvia shit right there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Do you guys want to plug anything? I don't have anything particularly new to add. I'm still making the vidges, and they're still pretty decent, I think. So check them out if you care. Otherwise, hell yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to go next? Uh, you know, I, was, I was thinking I might just end the episode, actually. <laughs> uh, okay. No, go ahead. Cranberry, are you playing any video games? Um, Thank you for asking, Dusk. Yeah, oh I'm playing God. some of them. I am That's playing awesome. some of them. Uh, by the time this comes out in like a week, I think, maybe two weeks, I don't know, uh, Inscription should be, should be released. I'll be playing that probably. That should be fun. Mm -hmm. Yo, what is that? Um, Tell me more. I've never heard of this before. Okay, so Inscription is a card game uh, similar to, I don't know, nothing. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. With, with, it, it's, like a, it's like a card game, very simplistic rules. Um, oh, you know, it's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh. You know how Yu-Gi-Oh, the whole system, the way it works is that you summon a monster and then you sacrifice that monster to summon a stronger monster? Okay. That's how I would describe it. It's Yu-Gi-Oh, basically, but very simplistic. Um, and there's definitely like a subversive element to the game. Think of think along the lines of either Frog Fractions or Pony Island or something like that, where it's like the game is a game. It's a functioning game, but there's a lot more going on. That's more psych. I wouldn't even say psychological. I would just say subversive, something weird going on. Is it like just single player or is it multiplayer? It, it is a single player game interesting maybe there's multiplayer i don't know I, that'd be pretty cool somehow there's like an invasion system where like all of a sudden another player comes and they Yu-Gi-Oh battle you that'd be pretty cool but i i, I oh. highly doubt it that's interesting all right cool i'll have to yeah. check out your video yeah and then i'll probably I'll, 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 I'll probably be playing darkest dungeon 2 when that comes out mm. oh okay. and I've, I've i haven't been doing videos on it but i've been playing the nickelodeon smash bros game <laughs> what yeah. do you think of that uh do you want me to actually like go into it a bit Sure. I, I, I could talk about it for a while. Yeah, I mean, if people, 
right, give, give me like a give me like a two minute explanation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't talk about it that much. Um, stylistically, the game operates like, or I guess mechanically, it plays like Super Smash Brothers Melee or Project M, things like that. Uh, which is really cool. That's the system that I prefer, as opposed to like Smash Ultimate. But there's a lot of issues with the game. Mainly, my biggest issue is roster. The game's got. I would say roughly 15 different, like slightly tweaked variants of Mario, basically. Uh, uh, like move move set wise, they're very similar. Um, and then like four unique characters, basically. So that's unfortunate. Um, which you know, it, it, but that, here's the thing though: like Melee had really only has six functional characters too, and that game has existed for 20 years now. Um, so I'm not, and I'm, I'm not saying that this is going to be as good as Melee. It's, it's not, it's not going to be as good as that. Online has some issues too. Every now and like my every now and then, I mean like one in every three games I get into a game and it's just like the lobby's just not working right. <laughs> so I don't know, but it's a cool game. It's fun. Happy to support anything that's not Nintendo. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess cool. that's the end. Yeah, I guess so. Voix, are you doing anything interesting or fun that you want to plug? I've been putting three videos up a day for a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We got Phoenix Final, Wright. Yeah, Final Fantasy, Phoenix Wright, and then Monster Train. I don't think I'm going to put up more than three videos in a day, though, so Phoenix Wright will probably take a day off when this video goes up. Mm. Or, can you can you make a tier list of those three games real quick? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Final Fantasy 13 2, that's S tier for sure. Okay. Uh, Phoenix Wright, probably in like the B tier right now. Game's been kind of messy. And then Monster Train, it's like an F tier probably. Don't really like that game that much. Fair. Kinda sucks. Yeah. yeah. That reminds me of those Steam reviews where it's like, have like 2,000 hours in the game and then they downvote it and they're like, eh, it sucks. Yeah. How, how do I close the game? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, I'm going to end this video now. We've been sitting Thanks for watching. Yeah. Like, comment. Do not subscribe. <laughs> no, you can subscribe. Come on. Do Kramer, not. Kramer, you're killing my analytics. What the hell? All right, well, uh, goodbye. Later all. Kramer, you want to say goodbye before? No. I no? Okay, I'm just going to end it then. Yeah.